this episode of Avoiding, Preventing, and Resolving Conflict. My name is uh, Leo Hira, and I'm the producer of this series. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your interest. I'm really excited about uh, this particular episode uh, because uh, I'm a big believer in, in acknowledging, uh, being informed about, and celebrating one's heritage. Well, this past weekend, I had the opportunity of attending the 39th Honolulu Intertribal Powwow. And of course I took along my camera and uh, in this episode I am going to share with you a number of the elements that I was able to capture on video um, in order to um, give you a view of what this gathering is about. You, you can legitimately ask, what is the linkage between uh, an intertribal gathering of Native Americans and the objective of our series, which is avoiding, preventing, and resolving conflict? Well, I'll give you my interpretation uh, of uh, what it meant to me. Native Americans were the inhabitants on the continent uh, before the onslaught of foreigners. Uh, they were divided into uh, tribes which were in competition. There were rivalries between tribes, there was warfare between tribes, and despite the onslaught of uh, foreigners who were dispossessing them of their lands and decimating their population, they never united. And as a consequence, they wound up being herded onto reservations, many of which were located on very inhospitable lands and many of them remain on those lands even today. So these gatherings were uh, created as a means by which members of these diverse tribes uh, could be able to be invited and participate in a not only a celebration of heritage but also in the much needed reawakening of that heritage amongst their, themselves, their youth, and their youngest members, and as a means of passing on that heritage. So these uh, gatherings uh, are a peaceful means, a celebratory means, by which members of the various tribes can come together and share their heritage uh, and educate, inform, and promote that heritage uh, to their members and to us, the public. This particular intertribal gathering uh, also has longevity. I mean, this was the 39th uh, gathering, um, and next year will be the 40th gathering. It's a wonderful expression. Uh, of heritage and one of the things that you will uh, be able to see uh, is how that heritage is represented uh, in the form of a hoop dance. Now why is the hoop dance special? Well first of all it tells a story. It, it, it links uh, the performance to a representation of something about nature and I think uh, as you watch the presentation you'll be uh, it'll be easy for you to identify uh, what that uh, representation is and to thoroughly enjoy the artistry and the skill and the technique uh, of the performer. So to me the linkage between um, the gathering and the objective of our series is that diverse groups can come together in a means but at a, at a celebration of their heritage, a sharing of their heritage, and I hope what it does for you, as it did for me, is to make me aware of just how important heritage is and how um, not only should we uh, be informed about our own heritage and celebrate it, but also be able to acknowledge uh, to respect 
and to celebrate the heritage of others. It's just a fantastic difference that makes us different, united in an event, and through the uh, participation of the event, being able to get a better understanding of each other. So please enjoy the remainder of this episode, and thank you so much for your interest, and until next time, aloha and mahalo.
we have about approximately 500 federally recognized nations in the United States. Um, but here in Hawaii, you know, the total number, estimated number of Native Americans here is about 30,000. Um, and again, because we don't have a tribe here or a reservation here, a lot of our Native Americans here are kind of removed from their heritage and their traditions. And so part of what we do is to educate and bring awareness and bring everyone together, come celebrate. Uh, we have a little bit of mix of different nations from all over the U.S. Uh, like I said, 500 federally recognized tribes. So we have people from all over. Um, we have Eastern Sky, uh, Iroquois nations here today. That's up in New York. And then we have some as far across as Arizona. We have some Opi. Um, so we, it goes all over.
American and Mexican predominantly, and um, our tribe is located in originally in the Great Lakes area, and then we migrated uh, as cousins of the Sioux to Nebraska, and then once the government uh, enacted the, for, I think it's the Removal Act of Native Americans in the 1830s, we were relocated to uh, to Oklahoma along with several other tribes. So. Um, that's my background, and um, uh, we ha hold an encampment every year since about the 1800s. The, all Otos come together, Oto Missouri is the name, and celebrate. from Laie and uh, she brought her family out here to do some hoop dancing and it's a really traditional sacred dance but it's spreading in different cultures and becoming a part of popular culture. So, right here, so traditionally powwows were really sacred and kind of almost like church and a way to really get in touch with your traditions but now it's more about coming together and having a good time and especially here in Hawaii we like to be hospitable and uh, that's what we're all about here. So. In the arena, we have different dances and different categories. We're a traditional powwow and not a contest powwow, so there's different types of powwows. Oh, 